Now that you have a lot of scene safety considerations in mind, you'll want to approach the scene and the patient with the correct body substance isolation, or BSI. This means using personal protective equipment, or PPE, to protect your body from contagious or noxious substances that you may encounter during your duties. You will be exposed to many bodily fluids, including blood, vomit, urine, sputum, and feces. It is important to protect yourself in all of these situations and wear the appropriate equipment to do so. Types of PPE include gloves, gowns, masks, and eye protection. BSI includes applying the PPE to yourself and applying these devices to the patient when appropriate. We spoke briefly in the last video about what to think about when determining if a scene is safe. Can you identify possible dangers in this picture? Traffic, spilled fluids, or bystanders? Great work. We also briefly discussed the importance of PPE. Let's discuss some of the different equipment used to protect us from communicable diseases. But before we do that, we need to briefly review how diseases are spread so we understand why we need to take the precautions that we do. Microorganisms responsible for the cause of diseases are known as pathogens. Pathogens are often so small that they are only visible under a microscope. Common examples of pathogens include bacteria, viruses, fungi, protozoa, and helminths. Any of these things can lead to an infection in a patient, or in you. As a medical provider, and oftentimes as a first responder, you will frequently be dealing with the patients that do not yet have diagnosed disease, so it is very important that you protect yourself just in case. Pathogens may be spread in a number of ways. One way is by direct blood to blood contact. This means blood contact with open wounds or exposed mucous membranes, such as the lips. Blood pathogens can also spread indirectly through a contaminated object, such as a sharp needle or a scalpel. Other bodily fluids can spread disease by similar mechanisms to bloodborne pathogens. Airborne pathogens are spread when someone coughs or sneezes into the air and another person breathes that air in and with it, the pathogen. However, not all pathogens are communicable. For example, Lyme disease is a bloodborne pathogen but is only spread through contact with a specific species of tick and cannot be transmitted from human to human. This is known as a vector-borne disease. A communicable disease, on the other hand, is a disease that may be spread from person-to-person -person contact. Common communicable pathogens and their corresponding PPE is covered in your required reading for this week. Now let's review common PPE that you will be expected to be familiar with and use as an EMT. Latex or non-latex gloves help to protect you from bodily fluids by preventing blood and bodily fluids from coming into contact with your exposed skin while treating the patient. Don't forget the importance of hand washing as well or the use of alcohol-based cleaning solutions. Eye protection is important as the mucous membranes of our eyelids are possible points of entry for pathogens. Not to mention, your sight is an extremely valuable tool for you being able to do your job effectively, so protect your eyes. Gowns can help protect your clothing or exposed skin from being contaminated as well. And lastly, masks help to protect us from respiratory pathogens. There are different levels of masks. A simple respiratory mask will be sufficient for most respiratory pathogens. However, certain pathogens such as tuberculosis or TB for, for short are so small that these masks are not sufficient enough. If TB is suspected, you should be familiar with an N95 or a high efficiency particulate air respirator. These are special masks that are designed to filter out even the smallest pathogens like tuberculosis. You should know where these masks are stored what your size is, and how to properly put on these masks. Now don't forget the importance of cleaning your equipment properly after each call. This helps to prevent the spread of disease, as inanimate objects be may become contaminated after contact with the patient, allowing for the opportunity for disease to spread to you or future patients. Lastly, do not make assumptions that some patients are more or less contagious than others. Utilize the practice of universal or standard precautions. This means treating all patients and all scenes equally, using the same types of PPE all the time. Remember also to properly dispose of soiled PPE into biohazard containers and change out soiled PPE with clean PPE frequently to avoid cross-contamination on various surfaces that you may encounter.